The time is now 8.35. We'll go ahead and kind of get started. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Sarah Stevenson Tuesday Morning Forum. Uh, my name is Winston Robertson. I'm a facilitator along with co-facilitators, uh, Ms. Laura McClady, who is running a bit late, Scott Carlinia Ivory, Ms. Jackie Walton Edwards, Jackie Edwards Walton, Ms. Mm -hmm. Nat Sully, Miguel Red, <laughs> Ms. Mary Johnson, Mr. Steve Johnson, Ms. Mary Johnson, Mr. Steve Johnston, our website el ed uh, editor, and uh, our chaplain, Ms. Sharitha Sherrill. Uh, our forum begins at 8.30, and it ends around 9.45, at which time we will pause uh, for audience announcements. And if you do not have a chance to make your announcement, you can send it to Steve at sjohnston at tuesdaymorningforum.org, and he will put it on the website and email it out to our uh, subscriber list. For you, we typically begin with uh, a morning prayer. We're going to ask Miss Jackie Edwards Walton to give us a quick prayer and in place of Miss Sharitha Sherrill. If everybody would please bow your head. Father, thank you so much for this first Sarah Stevenson Tuesday Forum of this year, 2023. We just ask that as we discuss. We're, we're moving forward today regarding speakers that you just blessed. Thank you for these so many blessings in the name of the soon coming King. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, if we have any first timers today, please introduce yourselves and uh, let us know something about it. Uh, Michelle, Father Sir. And um, became involved in what's happening in the city mostly by being politically involved. And then I met Jackie, I met them, and um, she was like, oh, that's what's happening down here. So, well, thank, thank you for joining us. Please don't let this be the last. All right. Hi, Amanda. Um, I'm Ms. Jacqueline. I'm here to get more involved in the community and the story y'all are talking about and what your concerns are. So I'm just interested in Thank you for joining us. You know, again, don't make it the last time. We yeah. look forward to seeing you again. So today we do not have a speaker. Today we wanted to set the tone for the remainder of the year by talking about how we would like to see the forum going forward with our presentations, with our guests, and talk about what's on your mind. What do you think would be conducive for the forum moving forward? And, you know, who would you like to see in the presentation seat? Who has that valuable information that you believe the community needs? Of course, we have rules, but however, the, we're going to temporarily suspend them for this this week because we want a very open dialogue. So we want everybody to participate. Please share your thoughts, your feelings on who and what you think we should discuss as we book uh, guest speakers for the Tuesdays moving forward. Uh, I'm Steve Johnston. Sorry to interrupt, but this is a new format for the tables. The microphones are in the ceiling. Having some difficulty hearing lower voices. You hear him speaking way up high. If all of you can do that, we'll be rich. Thank you so much, Sid. All right. Hey, Winston, I would right. love it if you could tell, especially Michelle and Amanda, about Applesauce Group before we launch in. Because <laughs> they're, they're, she wants, she's, she's, she's pressed. Michelle's active in the community, so it would be lovely if you would just give them a quick. Well, I appreciate that, Tanya. Thank you. I am the uh, founder and executive director of the grassroots 501c3 nonprofit named Applesauce Group. Uh, essentially, we, uh, long story, slightly less long. Some friends and I, after undergrad, started, uh, had a cookout. We were all HBCU recent grads, had disposable income. We said, let's put some money into a hat and have a cookout. Uh, it was a pre-social media world, so if you wanted to meet people, you had to do it. Physically, you had to go places to meet people. So we said, let's have a cookout to kind of end out the summer. That was in 2005. The cookout was successful. The name of the cookout was Big Ass Cookout. 
and it was fun. A lot of people were there, so we said, let's do it again. We did it again. More people showed up. Uh, it was successful, and we did it again and again and again. Until 2015, I got a call from the county on my cell phone saying, if you have this event ever again, we're going to uh, ban you from the usage of parking rec facilities for life. And that freaked me out for two reasons. One, when I would complete, like, you know, government applications and things like that, muscle memory, I would just put my mother's home phone and home address. Yeah, matter of fact, I'm 41 right now. And if you use my big card, it has to still linked to my mother's, you know, home. Two, two checks. So, you know, that's just kind of how, you know, so that, that's just the muscle memory of it all. So, uh, so when they called my cell phone, I was, you know, I was shook. I was like, man, the county has a secret ops team that will figure out who you are. So I didn't want any problems with the county. I shut it down, told them, all right, cool, this is the last one. That was in 2015. And at the time, my wife and I, um, I was married anyway, you know, so it, it, the, the transition of life has, has happened. And my wife and I bought our first house in the Lockwood neighborhood, which is the first single family neighborhood going north of Charlotte, if you take North Triad. And uh, we didn't have any children at the time, so she said, you should get more involved and go to a neighborhood meeting. And I went to that neighborhood meeting, and uh, a guy b b between her and Chris Dennis just kind of gassing me up and telling me <laughs> how smart I was or how great you are and these the elders. I ended up leaving that neighborhood meeting with the president of the neighborhood association. And I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what I had stepped into. And I, I nearly had instant regret. Uh, at the time, and the, the, you can see the article right now, Realtor.com deemed Lockwood in that entire area the third fastest gentrifying community in America. And just a point of perspective, Realtor.com isn't like a, a philanthropic organization that's saying, hey, this is a bad thing. This is like more like, hey, this is where the opportunity is. So you, you, you should go after it. And uh, now, and I'm the liaison between a group of people who lived in this community 50, 60 years under, under everything, underserved, marginalized, and a new group of people who come to the community expecting everything at, a, at, at the pace of in which they're used to have it. So, you know, it, was just, it blew my mind because I knew each of them as people. You know, I, I didn't know them to the system they were beholden to. I knew them as people, and I wanted to know how we got here as a society. Racism has always been conceptual to me. It's, you know, it's, don't go here, don't do this, people being mean. But uh, I, I just didn't understand how two people who I knew in a human level had such different experiences navigating life. And it, read, it led me to read two books that literally changed my life. Uh, the first was A Case for Reparations by Tana Hodge, because it really isn't even a book. It's an article in the Atlantic magazine, but it's like 20,000 words of so a book. And the other is Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. And I, that was the first time I've ever visited the ideas of racism through policy and housing policy and what that does. And it showed me what home ownership is to the American dream is everything and how wealth is built. But again, you know, being black, you don't know what you don't know and how you were disenfranchised from them, these systems and how it affected your life. And when I read those books and show how huge policy was and housing policy was to kind of shaping the world we live in and realizing that it was everything, I wanted to get on the soapbox and yell as loudly as I could because I was infuriated yet relieved because I wanted to tell my peers, like my parents, my friends, this isn't on you. This is it. This is done to you. This is it. When you're black in America, you can be by default a bit tough on yourself. You know, why is the peril only exclusive? Of, you know, the, the, the way the peril looks in my community. Why does this happen this way? However, again, when you, when you see these things from a policy level and how they were designed, you realize, ah, this is just the result of something designed to happen. And again, I, like I said, I just wanted to yell as loudly as I could, but I'm just, you know, some guy. I don't have a platform. I don't have a, you know, I'm not like this uh, a celebrity or anything. So uh, being that Lockwood is directly across the street from Camp North End, and they were a new uh, space looking to kind of 
invigorated. I had, we had a great working relationship with them. I was telling one of uh, the, the, the site overseers about this cookout I used to have. Her name was Varian in my younger, cooler days. And she said, you should bring it back here. And that's when the light bulb went off. I was like, okay, we can bring back the cookout. However, now that I'm the <laughs> president, I've met these organizations that have incentives for home ownership, like Green Key Partners, uh, Habitat, you know, even the city. You know, there are a lot of things that encourage home ownership. However, they have a tough time with messaging because people you know, just don't say, hey, let me see what this home ownership program is about. And I always knew how to gather people. My, my, since college, my reputation has been not a good, good part. But, um, so I utilized, I took her up on an offer. I took, uh, I went to, we went to Camp North End. We I got the gang back together. I said, we're going to have the cookout again. However, this time it's going to be sort of formatted where we have these resources on site. Uh, and, and again, they were, uh, it was Dream Key Partners, just other neighborhood associations, Habitat for Humanity. And I had uh, just information from uh, historians about what redlining is and what it, what it was. I would even play it over just like instrumentals and, you know, it was just kind of the same feel of the cookout, but with more access to resources and information. And that first year, 2017, when we activated, we changed the name to a vibe called Fresh, just through like indirect text messages, uh, chance encounters with people, people telling me stories. I ended up taking a tally and 43 people began the initial step to home ownership from what they had learned uh, and uh, just things that happened at the, the, the all of them didn't buy it all, or have they're still on the journey, but they it, the seed was planted. And from that, I kind of got hooked and we did it again in 2018, then in 2019. And my whole goal was just to, so I could sleep at night. You know, I, I wanted to see something change against the system that you know, I felt was hindering us. So that was my offering to say, I, I, I did my part. You know, I'm working a, a job. I got a family, so I couldn't immerse myself in it. But then 2020 happened. In 2020, my job is an experience in marketing. So I was on the road traveling state to state, maybe seven months out of the year, three or four days a week. And I don't know how much you, uh, how well you remember uh, March and April of 2020, but the last place I wanted to be was on the plane. Now I have a young child and, you know, I, I just didn't have the desire to travel like, like I used to. And also quarantine showed me how much of life I was missing. We were so accustomed to the life we were living where I was gone. And we used like FaceTime and I could see my son while, while I'm gone. But then when I'm stuck, it's like, oh man, I'm, I'm seeing him, I, like I'm right here watching my son grow up. You realize how many moments you actually miss. And while technology is great, it does not replace that actual feeling of being there. So that, that, that was just kind of it for me. I, I was kind of done traveling as much as I, I, I was previously. And I used the quarantine to say, I'm going to try to do this the, the nonprofit way. I'm going to try to scale these efforts to uh, showcase this, this outpouring of uh, joy and art with the Buddha Bio Power Fresh Seal. We can scale some events. Founded the nonprofit in 2020. 2021, we had uh, four large scale festival events at West Complex on the west side of Craig Street, in the, uh, right below Johnson C. Smith and Foreman Park and Shop parking lot. They, they uh, made a creative space. And they've been amazing. Like, and we've had more resources come out, more people getting access to information. And uh, yeah. And just kind of creating a space where community community can not only again just access access resources, but fill that void of creative creativity as well, and have access to art and just showcase just the beauty of Black community, which is kind of what the the, the mission has evolved to as well. And uh, 2022, we did the same thing. In 2023, we're looking to to grow even more. So it, it, it's not a a very complex formula to a response. However, I have seen its effectiveness and uh, I'm building this plane while, while flying. It, it has a lot of challenges, but I'm excited for the future. And that's just a synopsis of the nonprofit that found this. The name is Applesauce Group. And Applesauce Group is a, a nod to the old parental trick. Uh, you want to give a baby medicine, 
There's the one that you do it through applesauce. The idea is to give something to someone that's not easily digestible through something they enjoy. And that's kind of what the fit that is. We'll show you the time of your life, but while you're here, you can actually change it too. So, thank you all. Some you just talk so many. Skilling is hard. <laughs> uh, thus far, the West Side is, is home. Uh, who knows what the future holds, man? It, you know, it's really the red tag. Uh, operation. There's it, not a lot behind it. So I, I would like to do it, you know, ideally nationwide because there's a lot of communities can do that. West Side, West Boulevard. So, you know, I, I, I'm in it. You know, and again, like I said, that's what, what blew my mind after reading The Color of Law and uh, Case of Reparations. My whole life made sense. Well, I grew up on West Boulevard and Wilmore. Well, my father grew up off Baltimore Avenue in South, uh, in this South Side Homes. Well, my mother grew up in Fairview Homes, public housing, you know, and how they came, how their parents came to Charlotte from via migration from a uh, sharecropping town. Everything made sense, you know, and all this time you think, I'm a person, I make these decisions for myself. Nah, you're being steered into the direction they set for you. So, yeah, I just, you know, so I, I, the importance, I would love to see it everywhere, but it's tough. It's, it's tough, you know, it's, especially. And again, I'm the the way I approached it is I knew it would never get done if I never if I tried to study the ways of formulating a nonprofit and the, all of the rules and procedures it would never get done so I just did it jump in head first so you know I've I've fallen a lot as I'm walking forward and doing things but that, that that's the way I'm affected so again the ambition is there. But I, I got to pay for so. Thank you, though. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you for making me painful. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, that wasn't supposed to be the 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 start of the form of the impromptu presentation. However, again, we're talking about the form moving forward for the remainder of the year, things we'd like to see. Yes, we'd like to see things we think as a community are important to discuss. And again, I would love to hear thoughts, ideas. Well, I will toss out there that city council is considering um, adding four-year terms. And, but I'm not to interrupt you. As I'm, ty I'm typing what you say, if I'm not being rude. Yeah. They're considering adding four year terms. So it's voted out of committee. It was voted out of committee last week. And they are also adding four year terms and adding an additional seat as well um, to the districts. So it would be, um, we have seven districts now. So it would be eight districts and four at large. So that's something to talk about because part of the committee discussion last week was not actually taking it to voters, just doing it. So that's something to. Keep an eye on, or make it possible to get council members to come in and discuss. So. I tell you what, so we kind of have this this uh, this format, this dialogue, and I know you you're so well versed in this world. Can you just discuss some of the pros and cons that you see in that, um, or what that would oh, mean, how that would shape? Sure. They also considering adding, thinking of full time position too, so. Um, so, so a pay a full full time pay position. Yeah, you know, it's already paid. I mean, you already it's paid like those, money. but full time makes it like you know. I, I don't know what the ramification of full time is because they already get health benefits. I know, but um, but that means also like you know you don't know, you know, pay Well, I don't know what all that looks like. So Your second job, the actual job that you had, right? You end up not having. So it, it would definitely impact council members who have you know well paid full time jobs because city council they can only pay about fifteen thousand a year or so. So mm -hmm. uh, -uh it's cheap. It's like like peanuts. Well, no, it's fifty two half the compensation. Right. So you know they get paid out those um, you know the technology benefits, the food, okay. gas, automobile, automotive. The so after after yeah. all of okay. that, it's fifty. But baseline is like, like thirty nine. Okay. Um. So one of the ramifications I was reading in um, Steve's uh, Harrison piece was that if they create enough districts, is there a potential that the way the districts would be shaped, that six, which is Tarts district, would become 
even more of a, a Republican base. And they would um, draw in other districts that would basically siphon off, say, Democrats or whatever from, from six. So that would be one of the potential ramifications is that you would then have, you know, three districts that are Republican. They are, Steve also looked at whether or not you would get a district that could be predominantly Hispanic if you don't have any Hispanic representation on council. But according to this piece, the uh, cities, the Hispanic Latino population is too dispersed throughout the city, with the exception of District 5. Um, you wouldn't necessarily get a district predominantly Hispanic, plus the Hispanic voter turnout is so low anyway, so it doesn't mean necessarily that you can still, even if you could figure out a way to draw it, it's really gerrymandering, you might not necessarily get what you saw that you want. So, so they haven't decided where they it's just it's just out of it just came out of the governance committee, so it has to go to full council next. So and then um, the ramifications, you know, my concern is that it makes it even four years. It makes it even harder if you want to get people out of um, you know if you want to vote people out. Four years is a longer time time to get people out of out of office. The argument they're making is that if you do it every four years, they're not running. Every two years, so they get you know, right now, theoretically, they have one year of um, actually legislating and one year to run. But you know, when you look at the way our districts are drawn now, the only competitive races really are at large for the most part, anyway. So, um, so now, I think that's a common, common. I know this, this has been a discussion for a, a while, the four year mm -hmm. term, especially. Yeah, so what goes into you think the thought process of bringing this to? vote right after the districts were redrawn. I think it, it is just that it's been it's been in talks for a while. They had a committee last year that um, made the recommendations that they made and then the, the governance committee's been asked to take or the governance committee wanted to take it up and so <laughs> so what goes into the district redrawn? And that was just you know this so, year. That was uh, that was based on census. Hmm. The district redrawing is based on census data. So they have to redraw the districts every, I guess, every census tract here and here. Mm -hmm. right. So they do that based on population. So, because right now, I think it is what each district is so 100, so 120,000 people um, in each district. This redrawing could make it take it down to 110,000 people in each district. With, by adding the, the by additional. Adding uh, you know, we're talking about the, uh, the city council and selection and possibilities of taking on uh, an additional and making it uh, four years, you know, for them to be in office. But the, the social media is so diluted now with so much going on. It's hard to keep up with everything. It's hard to keep up with everything. And I think that our community um, is still divided, and it's, we, it's a thing of a bigger division for us. You know, that's we just being in two one four, we used to have people. We used to have a diverse, very diverse group of people, and a lot of people thought we we centered it around our elected officials and what was happening in the city. We have not uh, gained. The momentum since COVID to get the crowds back, not even online. Now, a suggestion that I thought was really good that uh, Winston had was we need to bring in the organizations that service the majority of the people. Are we need we need a target group of people in our community that need some services or some opportunities or whatever, but he's mentioned the fact, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that we almost invite them and ask them to come and share information like we used to on an ongoing basis. That's the reason I came to you. I still come is because you get so much information. Now, how you disseminate it is our problem now because of Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and you know a lot of people got in the way from emails and I couldn't believe I picked up my neighbor's 
child observer, and it, it may have been two or three pages. You know, I mean, the, the way he, the way this information is being disseminated, and I haven't heard of those books that he's talked about. You know, and then my son is telling me all this stuff. He's he's close to his age that I need to look at and put it up on YouTube. You know, it's just a lot being thrown at you. And what do you take in and what do you say? But we, we're at two in a year. We're trying to move our momentum. We're trying to get it back to what it used to be and bring back those entities like the city and the county to listen to our entrepreneurs and people that need homes and people that need loans and people that need health care. You know, we need to we need to have them sitting around this table. You know, we can all sit together. You can sit y'all can sit on one side and you can sit on the other side. Someone can sit over there. But we need to open up the discussion and then it needs to be monitored. We've talked all so much about monitoring what is being said here at Tuesday morning for How can we monitor that? We our, our job has been, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, to disseminate information throughout our community on the services and the programs and whatever it is that they need. That's what we've been doing all of these years. Now, what happens after that? We we don't have anything in place to monitor that. You know, if these politicians come in here and tell us they're gonna do so much, which they come. They always come, but we have not seen them deliver as they have promised for years. And there's nothing that we can do about it. So bringing up, bringing the best, building the momentum. Um, and Anthony from the Convincers Bureau wants to come. And I would love for him to come, but I want to have someone that can benefit from the, the Conventions and Business Bureau to be a, on the other side so they can connect and make some things happen. You know, so, you know, we, that's what we, and we need, everybody that's here, most of us are just, we're here, we're here, we're gonna be here, we're, we're committed this morning, but we need for more people to come and be a part of what we do. Well, hold on, let me. Uh, so, a Tuesday morning forum time arrives, and I always got a first question. I have to, uh, <laughs> don't get on the plane anyway. However, at the time, after my dad, I don't know what to call it. After, after uh, you, you, then Miss Walk. I was, the only thing I wanted to say was like, I've been coming here 20 years or more. The Tuesday morning breakfast is the first. You, you know, like, uh, now I think the concentration is primarily on politics, you know, and I don't have anything against that, but like America is uh, a capitalist society. And so for Tuesday morning breakfast, I would like to see more entrepreneurs and young people come in who want to do for themselves because every slave has a job, you know, so I would like to see more entrepreneurs. So not not as job and organization based, but more entrepreneurship. Yeah, I like to see more entrepreneurs and, and uh, uh, to share okay. information or just their story. Share share information and their story. You, you know, like I think we're overlooking entrepreneurship, and that's what America is. You you, you know, like uh, how can you be American and not think about entrepreneurship? Because that's what it is. Tell me your name again, Gary Young. Gary, yeah, I, I, you know, we know each other. That's, that's uh, just, um, and it kind of piggybacks off of what was stated already, um, where I was going with it. When you look, when I had the opportunity to really build up and shape the Black Chamber of Commerce in Charlotte, the thought process was you understand what you do, you understand what your purpose as an organization is, but you have to fit into the game plan of the city. Charlotte is a very unique town. You know, it's very quick. It's very much about who you know. It's very much about resources. And is that something that's worthwhile to them? Understanding where the city is headed and then bringing in people from business leaders, from the city, from the county, across the spectrum, bringing these individuals in to speak will create that audience and that interest for folks to want to attend because it's information that's worthwhile and pertinent, not only to me, but for this city as a whole. You know, um, 
really thinking along the lines of where, you know, this 2040 plan. How can we dive into that 2040 plan, pick out information that's really pertinent to help people within the communities across all sides? Um, you talk about how do we, the divides that we have. There is a major, not just in the forum, but across the city, a major generational political and ideology divide across Charlotte. We need to have folks who can bridge that medium where we have folks who we're doing the online stuff, but we have to have that old school touch and feel with folks. You know, um, since COVID, that's something that's really lacked. And until you get that, that's really what's going to pique people's interest. So having those representatives, having folks out there that's reaching those generational divides. Um, so having that, um, the monitoring, you spoke on the monitoring. They, I've noticed since we came last time, they have some new equipment. There's speakers in the ceiling. We have the cameras up here for the online. There's ways to capture it and get that information out. And I think that's just it, what you're seeing, getting that information out. Once we have people coming here, they're stating things to this public forum. How do we hold them to it? How do we hold their feet to the fire? How do we keep track of that? And I think we now have some technology that um, has the capability of doing that. But um, yeah, just going back to that first notion, really understand intricacies of the game plan of Charlotte and bringing those resources and getting that word out to the common folks, the folks who don't feel like they're at that table when those decisions are made. What do you think of more of those limiting aspects are that make Charlotte so unique so people who would come to this forum will have difficulty encroaching that system? Well, I always used to tell my members at the Black Chamber, you know, the easiest way to get into the door to do business with individuals, particularly here in Charlotte, is let them see that your ideologies align outside of business. Charlotte is a um, very philanthropic town. Philanthropy is very big here, whether it's the arts, whether it's um, museums for um, history, et cetera. Helping folks, when people see that my ideology align outside of business, now I'm more comfortable to do business with you. When I see we have the same interest in wanting to help the youth, when I see that we have the same interest in wanting to help return the citizens, when I see that we have the same interest in wanting to help the um, homeless population, now I see, okay, you're somebody I can really vibe with, I like. Let me see how we can do business together. And, I mean, I've sat on the board of the Charlotte Chamber. I've been fortunate to sit on the board of the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance and really have that look behind closed doors at how things are happening and how things are being worked out. And I promise you, it's not just happening at a table like this. It's happening at breakfast. It's happening on the green <laughs> golf course. Etc. And we have to make sure that folks are really understanding about how to get into that door. And, and even still, even if you can't get into that door, how do we bring that information that's taking place of being thrown out behind that closed door and bring that out to the forefront? And I think that's what this forum has the capability to do. Mr. Jack. Um, I wanted to just ask Laura a question. Uh, what do you think who was the gentleman you said was convention of this year? Um, okay. Okay, because you know the last one was the one who pretty much lobbied, um, didn't do such a good job in the application for the CIAA to return. Okay, well, I, I don't, he just, I was referred by him to him and, uh, he wanted to come, so I just need to follow yeah. that with the day for the day if he come. But I don't want him to come if we don't have the right people here, you know. Mm -hmm. We can talk off the line about that. Actually, yes, kind of. Can we kind of dive into that? Because I think that is a way to polarize and activate uh, presentations if we have the right people in the audience. I don't know if you guys remember when I brought. Uh, Derek Weber here, who that had the battle of the bands in Charlotte, but had to move it to Houston because of the conflicts with the CRVA. So he would be the ideal person to have in the audience. I'm sure he would like to get some stuff off his chest anyway. So he would know the questions to ask, and he would know how to, I guess, pick the information from the person who is in charge that people like us could benefit and learn from. So I think if we are intentional in uh, scheduling the room as we do our pre, uh, presenters, I think that could have some some uh, some promise. <laughs> I uh, note on people that are are watching us the streaming. How if they if they have an idea 
What's the best way for them to get that to us now? Just, just like they would. Uh, I am about to get my number out. But uh, you can send an email to sjohnston at tuesdaymorningforum.org. And uh, I'm sure Steve is, is pretty savvy to see those emails and maybe get them to us while we're having this discussion. But aren't they usually texting into you? Anybody that's watching online that has a suggestion on So you want to give out your number? Wait. You know, so that's not. Go, you know, it goes to Steve, and Steve sends them yeah. to yeah, you are on this. Yeah. Maybe we could set up a Google Voice number that goes to the forum that we all could use to, you know, and that's the whole point of this this session, so we can kind of implement things going forward. I just wanted to share with Gary. Gary, uh, Steve has been taping our two for for a long time. And now people can, as they've indicated, they can go online to some Facebook live, as well as our website. And he keeps those numbers uh, available to all of us for our viewership, the number of people that are coming in. So but the monitoring part requires a lot of thought and concentration and follow up. That's where we have missed. We miss, we have a hand. We have a hand. Well, we have. We do. We do have. That's Miss Carlinia's job. Yeah, but it is. But she's not available. We, but we do. We have addressed that. Instead, we, we have addressed we have someone who comes in and try to do that for us. Yeah. So so the follow up. How is it? What's the feedback that we're getting? How how's it really impacting the monitoring and all the Right. Uh, yeah. We, we, we've had, we've had that, but, um, Absolutely. <laughs> um, see, it's the, the components are there, you know, the, the, how we are going to reach, we even ask one of our younger, uh, attendees that comes to Tuesday morning breakfast on an ongoing basis, if they would help us, you know, reach out to them. The younger generation, TikTok or whatever, however they are, they are reaching out. We must <laughs> come up with a way to come <laughs> to, to get to that group of people. You know, we have, all of us have people that we can call and say, come to you before. But we need that card, the mayor, mm -hmm. the school superintendent, you know, the sheriff, you know. People want to get, get it off their chest. They want, right. they want to be able to tell them what they think. What's but the then also, because we want to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we want to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we invite them to give us information, not just to. You kind of touched on it with the organization for bringing those folks in, but going a step further, kind of like I alluded to a little earlier, reaching out to and having, reaching out to and having formal partnerships and relationships with some of these organizations, like. The chamber, the regional business alliance, um, the black MBAs, um, the black accounts association, these different organizations that has access to not only a younger generation but a demographic of the younger generation to which this form will appeal to, um, reach, having relationships and partnerships with them where they can disseminate information about the form and information about future meetings to their population as well. That's another thing to really look at where. How do we get to some of these organizations in the community and work with them instead of just having them come in and speak with us, make them a part of our right. home? This kind of it's for it all. Like all these young, you know, what, what young people can do in terms of connections, but I do think we're on the right track with that because if you get the right people, they can use history and all that. But the one but I wanted to speak just a little bit to. When I walked in, you were talking about policy and how policy actually has caused a lot of the difficulties within our community because of the policy that 
just keeps going on and on and on. And it seems to me, as Fulton has done a wonderful job getting uh, elected, giving candidates for offices the opportunity to speak. And I think it's one of the best, most recognized groups. I know it's where I'd like to come because I like to, because I trust what's said here. And um, they know that good questions will be asked and I can make better decisions. But it's, so I think when you're talking about monitoring, you're talking about like holding people accountable. Accountable, right. Okay. And so I think that the forum has every right, in fact, to, to ask people to, to, excuse me, to ask people, can you hear me now? I, I don't hear we're all out of both ears, so I mean, when we're, I can't tell how loud I'm speaking, so you don't hear me. Um, the forum, I think, needs to maybe even schedule and each month have someone from the city council or the county commission or the school board or for staff, but have representatives from this come to talk about, you know, what are the issues, for example, I was on school board a long time ago, but I keep up with the issues. There's something major, major going on at the school board with the, and there's a lot of major things, but there's going to be a decision made within the next couple of months about a comprehensive plan that will impact uh, facilities for the next 10 years, magnets for the next six years, student assignment for the next year, six years, and whatever the policy is written, this is the policy. <laughs> this is what's going to be happening in CMS. And and um, somebody needs to be talking about that here and, and responding to the questions that the forum has raised. Uh, so, so anyway, I, I, I think that maybe scheduling, and, and you mentioned like the Chamber and, and some of the other organizations, um, maybe at least having a couple of weeks each month to, to schedule those folks who are decisions. If we have a chance, I'll be glad to share with anyone. Maybe some places people can go, but I think this is a place a lot of people feel trusted. Trust to me, that's where the divide is uh, between your point and Ms. Laura's point. We are inundated in today's society. We're inundated with information, so you think you know everything. However, life is local, you know, and the, the nuanced information you get here will affect your everyday life. However, you don't know what you don't know, so you don't realize what you're missing out. We understand the rhythm because we've all been in this room, you know, and we, we get the value that comes out. However, trying to explain that or articulate that to someone who believes I can check my Google alerts and get all the news that's happening in the world every minute, it's tougher for them to see the, the value that comes out of this room that's so distinctly local. And, and, and I think once you establish a rhythm, you come enough, you get that, you'll be hooked. I'm hooked. You know, my, I came with my dad, uh, maybe, I don't even know how long it's been now, well, six, seven, eight years ago, and I haven't been able to, to stop. You know, because I realized the value once I kind of established before I was just spending time with my dad, but now I have to be here. I need the information that comes from here. And I believe there's hope in getting others to follow suit if they are if they have the opportunity to establish a rhythm to see the importance of the form as is. And um, whatever it takes to articulate that or create that marketing so they can not just come one time and be like, okay, that, that was cool, but you know, because it depends on the speaker. But if you come for a month straight, month two months straight, and and find yourself, you know, among the community members and just the the energy in the room and the the, the networking in, in the room, you'll be hooked. You'll be hooked. We got a good product. We just got to convince. You know, just the, the idea of finding the consumer or convincing the consumer how good the product is. I think, I think the consumer has various interests, you know, and I think that, uh, I love to be one of them. I think that we're going too far into politics. You know, we have city council, 
And all of them come in and say the same thing, basically. You get out this amount of cash. And I think that the for what I can understand that the uh speak up. So I think that uh we need more diversity in people we bring in, you know. Like uh I get uh, me personally, you get tired of seeing politicians, you know, they come in and tell the same lie, tell the same joke, you know. So I think if we just need more diversity in the guests that we have for this community. Let me go. Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert. Piggybacking on, on what Tommy is, is saying, and pretty much what we're all trying to say, the forum has been very successful for a very long time, but we're getting outdated in what we're doing, and we're trying to keep it fresh. We're trying to make it so that everybody can satisfy all of those needs, and I think we, we can do it. I don't, you know, politicians get boring to people that have been around politicians for a long time. But we must remember that not all of our audience has been around politicians for a long time. The politicians will always be relevant because they're running the city, they're running the county. We always need to know what they're thinking. So we always need to have them come in and tell us, you know, what are your goals for this year? But to the point that we've also made, we need to be able to say to them, well, last year when you were here, this is what you said. How far are you along with that now? We need to make what we're doing with the politicians more relevant. And then having the politicians, I think, won't be just your standard stuff. Because right now, we just let them come in and tell us. We don't hold their feet to the fire. But we have, as I said, pointed, uh, a couple of Carlina volunteers, I don't want to say pointed, but Carlina volunteers to be the person to make sure that we note everything that they say. And when they're here the next time, we follow up. So we have kind of addressed that. And I think if we do that, then we've covered the politicians, but we've done it in a more meaningful way than we usually do. I think it is so important, which Tommy has been saying for the 20 years that he has been here, we need to always have those entrepreneurs. They need a forum. And I think we can be it. My suggestion is that instead of having the last 15 minutes for announcements, because people can just send those in to Steve. It's, Steve, what is our, our emailing now that goes out? What, around, around how many people do receive the email? Uh, I'll give you two numbers. The total number mailed is 1,500 plus. The number almost is about two to 300. Okay, but the information is there. And, you know, maybe we need to just always emphasize that all of the announcements will be going out in your email. I love them. I go through them. They are very helpful because a lot of them are not mentioned here. A lot of them are sent directly to Steve. So I like going through them just to see what's going on. We need to make sure that people know that that is available and maybe we'll get more people opening. Those 1,500 people will, will spend more time opening for the announcements. So instead of having announcements for the last 15 minutes, have an entrepreneur for that last 15 minutes so that entrepreneurs know they have a forum. Maybe, therefore, we'll get a bigger, and most of the, the, the entrepreneurs, I'm assuming, are a younger crowd. So it gives them somewhere to look for the forum. So we need to do things that are going to pull in all of those people. And as I said, I, I think we can do it. I think we can I'm serve so, all those folks. I, I'm, I'm going to say a thought, then Chris, then Gary. Let me ask you this. How dedicated are we to the current format of uh, one subject for presenters, a present, presentation group? And now, what I mean by that is, the, the young woman who has the vocational school on Vedas Ford Road, who, who listed just the host of challenges she's having with support and funding. What if we were to couple her with a soft services representative from the county to kind of present on what's available that she could need or entrepreneurs could need as well as what she does. So, you know, you kind of have that, that mingling of what is needed and what's available, then the information is beneficial to us all. Does that make sense? 
Well, I don't know if that's any different than what we would think. Have people, you know, make sure that we pointedly invite people that we, for our audience to be here live, that we know is going to ask the right questions. But I, and I say this knowing that it's not something that we, that we would do intentionally or it's something that we have avoided all these years and we've done a darn good job of it. We don't want any points of contention. We don't want to invite people that are going to argue back and forth. Right. However, information, like again, the, the, the uh, speaker we had with the catering service, uh, Toby, who makes the sandwiches. Now, if he were here with somebody who knows how to contract with the airport, and they could have the dialogue on what each entity does, the information from that could be beneficial to a greater community. So he would know and he would learn how to get maybe a contract with the airport and so would everybody watch that for him. As well as every other entrepreneur that's making sandwiches. Right. So, so I mean, it, I mean it, that's America. That our speaker is going to be somebody that's going to talk about the airport and what services they're providing, then all of the people that are making sandwiches should be tuning in. That's the idea of letting them know ahead of time who our speaker is. That sandwich maker will have a unique set of questions that are privy to his business, which will help that, you know, us in the audience may not. So just having those two have that conversation amongst each other, not even a conversation, but, you know, as a response to this is my business. Oh, this is which, how you can get to the airport. I think that could be. I guess what I'm really asking you, are you saying have them both as speakers at the same meeting or just make sure that he's in the audience? No, have them both as speakers at the same meeting. And that's what I'm saying. It's kind of do, try to do a contention. Kind of, not if there's, there's not a, like, if Toby tried to get into the airport and was denied, I think that would be the contention. But if Toby doesn't even know or hasn't even thought to try to approach that system, it would be very helpful. It's two we sides. don't always know that. We're talking about people that we know. We know somebody. We can ask, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. There's two sides to that because if I tried to get into the airport and I couldn't, I got denied, and now I have a forum with somebody who runs the program to get minority or diverse businesses into the airport, I can probe and ask questions as to, well, why didn't I get in? What are things that may have been the issues with the application, et cetera? The one thing you don't want to handicap yourself to if you have somebody say the sandwich maker. You don't want the audience to only be that. You want the audience to be broad and diverse. You know, um, if I have somebody who's speaking on how to do business with the airport, that's going to be attractive to sandwich makers, GCs, um, right. the pressure washer, et cetera. So you don't, you don't want to limit it. But I, I think one of the things is, I thought that's where you were going with it, is have resources for entrepreneurs as opposed to just entrepreneurs. One of the things you can do from an entrepreneurial standpoint is have entrepreneurs sponsor the Tuesday morning breakfast. Entrepreneurs can give to the breakfast, present their product, have them set up in the back room, give samples out, and anything they give can be a write-off for that company. So having entrepreneurs really get their product out, get their name out, and use the form as a, you know, as a baseline, but have the resources for these entrepreneurs. So if you're talking about the city county, have the economic development department from the county or from the city come in and speak to these entrepreneurs. Um, have somebody from, I, I run supply diversity until May, I ran the minority business referral system for Bank of America. So have individuals talk about how to get into the door of Fortune 500 companies and do business with these entities. And now you're gonna have a great, wider base. All right, well, I gotta go to Greg. Um, resource, Rob, resource wise as far as getting information out to the community. I think a lot, a good bit of Charlotte community is maybe missing out too because they're working. Um, like they're trying to survive. So mm -hmm. that drains you. And I don't think also the educational aspect is that big. Like even with teaching the uh, ins and out of politics. So um, just say missing missing communities with the information that's being given out. A lot of people miss that. With the younger generation, I would love for Tuesday morning breakfast to somehow get more involved with schools. Just say like what Charlotte maybe see if they could use this for an educational experience. And because hey, they're gonna grow up. Those are gonna be the politicians. So just to get like a heads up on how everything works and to get them in a position where they're meeting people, having different conversations. Um, 
What would that look like for you? I would say, like, um, from 8.30 to 10.30, maybe first period, like a field trip. Maybe they can come and experience, or we can maybe have a representative to go talk to different schools and projects. Maybe we can do some volunteer projects at the school to kind of just mingle with the younger. Each generation, I think, needs to have representative in this room. And they need to spread that because we always talk about how, like, it's just old, old people usually are in government and running things. And I guess that's good that they're changing it full time because if they're getting compensated, they don't so much have to worry about working to provide for their family. So that could be the work. So I guess that's the positive with that. But I would like to see us engage more with people that's not in these circles and in these groups. Um, people that is out there just trying to uh, maintain, just, you know, keep their family. I agree, I agree with everything my daughter said. You know, like, we, we need to be more diverse to bring more people in. We have to say things, I mean, we have to do things that people are interested in. You know, that's what brings people in. Like if you address their interests and stuff. And I think as a forum, you know, we'll just come in, you know, we just become too political. You know, I think it's other things besides politics. What's a good balance for you? you, you I know you are suggesting. You know, like, this do you see, how much value do you see in it, like everything? What would be the perfect pie to you if we were to cut this up? Uh, well, I know, but, but you have an opinion. No, I'm asking to you. You have an opinion. It's your job. Hey, let me finish. Yeah, how much I want. Let me I have one more. Let me finish. I have one more. Okay. Thing. Even with the politi politicians that come in, like, we should have a list, like, or some type of demands, what we do expect out of them and find some kind of way to hold them accountable. I need to come in for a purpose. Yeah. You know, for a reason. What are you, what are we giving you our vote for? Are we defining the reason or are they defining the reason? No, no we, we need to define that. We and we need to reach out to people who's not going to be here. And I guess that'll, like, that'll require me, I'll say, doing things outside of Tuesday morning, breakfast, like footwork, but just to find out, like, hey, what is it that we really need? And so, like, periodic checkups. Yeah, and to be held accountable. Like, have you did this? We requested this to follow up. Have you did this? What is it going to take to make this happen? Um, because just like we vote. Ms. McLeod, if we're still talking about school, okay. Um, I can't remember how many years it was. Maybe seven years or so. Did a combination of Greer Heights and then Cotswold because my fifth grade moved over to Cotswold. The teachers have a very set program that they have to keep to, but where they always, always need you is they can have a separate table and you help the readers. You can just sit there and read with the kids and have the kids read back to you, which does not mess up their set program at all. So it's a win-win for both of you, okay? And if you go on a trip, you go for two days a week, one day a week, and they become very accustomed. You get very attached uh, to them. But that is usually, you know, the program that parents get involved into. And if you don't mind, I'll jump over to Gary. Okay, I like what you talked about when you were talking about having a speaker that would want to tell other friends that are in the same, you know, format, whatever, that would kind of triple over and say, oh, I did this. Oh, okay, then I'll do that. And my first thought was philanthropists. But then I thought, wait a minute, philanthropists like to be anonymous. And I know lately I've been wanting to find out who put or people put in millions of dollars into the Humane Society, the new one because it is gorgeous. And I'm over there on a fairly frequent basis, and I can't find out a thing. 
And but I don't know if somebody who's sort of the principal here goes over there and or has a contact. And if we could get somebody to speak on how it all happened, how it all got put together, and then could recommend another one of a person who is a philanthropist in you know in Charlotte. There was one name on the building forms and going from there to there. And who knows? This philanthropist gets in touch with somebody that you feel, you know, could could benefit. And they Hmm. All right, uh, Rashid, it was Walt. Oh, was it? Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Laura, then Rashid, then Ms. Walt. I, I just wanted to say that we have just about seven of us that have been committed to this wonderful world for years. And we do the best we can on a volunteer basis. And we've had other people that have come to us and said that they would assist us in, you know, monitoring, uh, holding people accountable, or just attending. But it hasn't happened. It has not happened. Consistency. We're consistent. The ones of us, most of us that you see, we are consistent. We've been here. We did it for two years, even when it was downtime, you know, with COVID. Steve, we're committed. We've got to we we've got to relook at what we our plans on how we're going to do it. All of this is excellent information that we need, and but we need to actually implement some of what is being said this morning. So that's what we've got to do, Winston and, and, and Jackie. And what would that look like to you? What that looks like to me? It looks like that. <laughs> you know, hold on to your seat. <laughs> We need to have a retreat. Mm. The seven of us need to have someone in to give have us a retreat so we can come up with a plan, a comprehensive plan on how we're going to do things because Gary mentioned this, but years ago we had there was a group of us and we positioned ourselves on all of the major boards and commissions for shop. I served on the airport too. That's when they put about 10 or 11 black businesses at the airport. That was my job. That's that was, Those were my orders. It didn't come from anybody but this little group that we were working with. You go there and you make sure that we have, you speak for the black businesses in this city. And that's when they started, that the door started, but it was a, it was a plan. And then somebody went to the Commission of Business Bureau. And there was someone that was uptown in Charlotte on the, on the, where they loaned money. We had somebody sitting on all these boards and commissions, and we, but I wasn't speaking for me, I was speaking for everybody that was on this committee, and they told me what to say. I would write it down, I would go to the meetings, and you just have to have representation there. So that's, we did it from inside out, and having a plan like that to go inside out. And then work from within and identify the people in the community. But we need to come up with a plan for today's environment. And that was back in the 80s and the 90s. And I can, I can tell you some of the people that actually served in the various positions. If you don't believe me, you can go check it out and see what changes were made in our community for black businesses and black people during that time. Mm. I mean, it was like a secret society, but we made it happen. We made it happen, and th that's what can happen with the same thing, like finding out who the philanthropists are in this town. You know, it's a list. You know, we can do that. We can go over there and we can talk to the people. But we, I mean, we've got. It's just the, those of us that are getting paid all of this money to keep two to one forum together need to get together. <laughs> And have, and have a, a retreat, you know, more than 30 minutes an hour, have someone facilitate it and come up with a plan on how we are going to do this, working with 
everything, especially everything we talked about this morning. I've taken some notes, but I know you say you're taking notes. To put that on the agenda and have someone to help us plan on how 2023 is going to be better for us for two smart forward. I guess this retreat can be uh, at this resort, uh, Bojangle and Trade. <laughs> <laughs> no, what we have in our possession right now is this space. They have been generous. This is really belongs to the city. We were in numerous places before we got here. I think we can possibly call this on. You know, we may not be able to meet it on a Tuesday morning for an hour or two, but I'm pretty sure they can give us a corner. You know, it's not like there's a lot of us, you know, to, to have. This is this is like a home for us, right? So this is available to us for free. You know, and I mean, this is this is free to us, and I think the city appreciates having us associated with them providing us space with the Tuesday morning for you know, it's got to be a win-win for everybody. You know, and everything we do. Rashid and Ms. Walton, it was, it was Walton. So I like the idea of like keeping the politicians here, and like she said earlier, like a lot of the politicians they come in here and stuff, but usually it's only during like election season. I think we need to have them like here year round, and so we can like get updates and progress on like what's going on and stuff, and also like. Y'all talking about like getting the crowd, but most of the time when like we get the politicians here, it is like a larger crowd and stuff, a bigger audience, and that can also like help boost attendance just like throughout the month and stuff. But yeah, I would just try to like get more polit the politicians here like on a regular basis instead of just during the election season. Hi. Let me ask, Steve, do you know how, how many Tuesdays of the year do we meet? About what, 48 maybe? 45, something like that? Yeah. So what is a reasonable number to ask, I guess, a city councilman and a county commissioner and a school board rep to do a forum, to have a forum and just kind of give it three times a year? We don't have to be the same ones every time. Right, but I mean, so it's uh, how many, eight districts uh, for seven, 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 districts seven, seven, well, I'm at large, it's how many total? Uh, Four at large. Four, four at large. It's 11 minus 10. Can't handle so many yeah. meeting at the same time. So, what is it? We got to iron out what this looks like. Right. Yeah, we, I mean, this has got to be some planning because we cannot allow to make this thing for politicians all together. Right. It's got to be planned. And we, we, we might want them to come when it's not election time. Yeah, no, it's so what, 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 what does that look like? when it's not an election time. We have always had the superintendent comes, the uh, police come, the sheriff come, the mayor comes. They have been standing every year. It has nothing to do with elections. They come to tell us what's going on. We've but, been doing it forever. And my, my but things they my want party. to bring up, right? Yes, and we said they come and that's what we want to do. Tell us As a response. what's going on. And that's what the point that we have been making, several of us, is what we haven't done is kept track of what they said in in 2022 so that when they come in 2023 we can question them on what they said the prior year that's what we have failed to do but we acknowledged last year that we were going to do that and that's what carlinia said she will do so you don't believe it should be we, yes we have them every year we have no them i mean like we tell them you, we're we're expecting you to come these three times a month we, we, i mean a year Hold on, Gary, Gary, let me, she had a hand up. Well, just, just sort of try to keep it simple. You said quarter. We've got city council, county commission, and school board. So if you did it quarterly, you, I mean, this is just to sort of organize, and it can always be. But so you could have each month, like, you know, January have city council, February have School board, March have city uh, county commission, and then April, May, June, you know, start again. In other words, so that you would hear from someone quarterly. You could choose who. It might be specific council members, or it might be the the um, staff, the superintendent, or it might be the the, the um, um, manager. And and but 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 you could just sort of in your mind have quarterly. We'll hear from somebody. 
connect with these three organizations, these organizations. And but we don't just come in and hear what they want to tell you. We know you know the issues, and if you have that retreat, you will have that those things done. But you know the housing, housing, and housing policy is going to be an issue, right? So you you know, you tell them when you go, this is what we're going to be asking you. And you focus on that. You ask them to focus on that. And you have certain questions you develop to focus on that. And then you have to focus on that. And you invite people, invite somebody who's homeless. And, you know, and I think you can, if you sort of, if you organize around this quarterly idea, then you can you can choose who, what the issues are, and you get, you're in control, and you do it enough ahead of time that, you know, you know what you're trying to accomplish. Well, I also think you know, for some of that, you need to make, I mean, I think this group has every right to have very few of those folks that you help get elected, that they need to show up, not just occasionally, and they can't be here every week, but many of these folks could be here at least once a month. And I think that should be something that, you know, you invite, mm -hmm. but you also expect. So, so that's going from both sides. But I, I think that would be great. Would be great. What Lars talking about would really make <laughs> Before I go to you, let me ask you, while you were on school board, if we asked you to come uh, <laughs> three times a year, would you, how would you, how would you respond to the invitation? I was here. More than that. I mean, to, I mean it's like, if that was kind of not a, not a, you know how you, it's like a, a, a mom asking, like, not requirement, but say, hey, we would like to see you three times a year present. Would you, how would you respond? I think I'd say, you know, we would like, we would like you to come. You know, Ray, we're expecting you to come. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's, it's it's you can't come every Wait, she's the wrong person because she used to be here all the time. Uh, yeah, so we'll get every day. But three times out of it. Well, I'm saying, because it's, it's a lot. It's, we're talking about, you know, seven yeah. people. But this well, is well, right. Come on. Come on. Right, right. You know, we invited, the, we have invited people based on the, on the issue. We wanted to know about universal pre-K. We invited the, the commissioner person who did that. We wanted to know the CIAA. We invited Smudgy. You know, we, we can do it by issues, but we don't want them all to just come to talk to us. You know? Yeah. All right, go ahead, Gary. Well, no, she touched on everything. I was going to say, really, I don't know why you ain't supposed to want to play the civil team. But, uh, it goes like from a politician standpoint, like my mom said, you don't get rid of the politicians unless you're sitting on the back of the floor. You got to have them best. Not just here, they should be here now. They should be a part of this conversation. They should be here when you're talking about. Join the boards, that's the exact way you do it. When we built the Black Chamber, we had a position on every board and committee, and it wasn't just about me, it was about empowering everybody. I'm on the CBI committee, I got somebody on the business side with the county, I got somebody on the junior league, I got somebody at Goodwill. Just having people on various boards empowers your organization, but you got to have politicians vested because they're the ones voting on those board members. Mm -hmm. So they got to be vested and a part of what's going on on that side, but from the organization and the planning side, yeah, when you do your retreat, look at create those issues, business, economic development, housing, um, education, anything that's important, and then start listening to those issues and start bringing up, okay, we want so-and-so to come and speak on this round around this time of the year, here and here, and just start creating a calendar based on those particular issues. And then from there, you'll systemically start having a calendar of folks who want to come in on a quarterly basis, et cetera. Like you said, it doesn't have to be the same people. You got about, what, 12 different folks on the council. You can bring them in, so them in, have them come and speak on their areas of expertise. You should want to serve on a certain committee for the city. So when you're going to speak on an issue, have a certain person come in. Talk to the boards. Talk to those committees, the community members that are on the committee. Have that committee come and speak. Charlotte Business Inclusion. Have their board come and speak to business owners, et cetera. So it's a lot of ways to run on it. But you got to have the politicians vested, not just here on occasion. All right, let me say this before we move forward with the conversation. It's a little after 945. We got to be out of this room by 10. Does anybody have announcements? Oh, you do? No, I haven't been recognized. No. Oh, that's right. So, no, no, no. I, I'm saying that so we can just kind of keep this conversation going until they kick us out. We just kind of leave maybe three, three, four minutes till 10. So, please, Ms. It was Walker. Um, I, I want to say, it's, it's okay. I want to say our 
initially, and, and a lot of you have already spoken on what I was going to say, but the way I got involved here in 78 was I was one to nine. I could come to this meeting. And a lot of folk can't have rear ends in seats, depending on how they work. But that's how I got here. And like you said, once you come in, you begin to love it. The other thing, and this is kind of disjointed because the last few folk that spoke um, kind of took some of this. But years ago, um, when we were talking about the airport and the airport bond had failed, that was back in the early 80s. Pete Cunningham, when we were talking about how to bring in the sandwich people and the um, airport. Well, after that bond failed, someone from the airport came and we were able to get Bernie. Bernie did shoes, he beautiful shoes. Um, and folk with restaurants and all, that's how they got in. But that airport guy came in and he says, we've got spaces for here, for this, for that. That's how those folk got in. The other thing is the forum used to, um, months, and I'm sure you will remember this, we, we were broken up by weeks. Um, housing was done by John Crawford. Um, economic development and entrepreneurs was done by Anthony Hodge. What do you mean done? Presented. You had to bring in a speaker, and that is what they said. That's, that's what they talked about. Um, education at that time was done by author. Author was on the school board at that time. And then health. Um, that was such a big thing because we used to have different boards, um, Department of Social Services, the Health Department, um, all, all of those big major ones with the county. And Jim Richardson served, before he went to Raleigh, he served on that big board of health. So he would bring in a speaker. But we always had, those were the four major ones. So elected official could come, or it could be someone from staff who came yeah. to talk about these four major items. And you hit a politician with all of them. So let me ask you, do you think it would be resourceful or kind of out of character to have a defined set of values that we that will kind of be our compass in, in, in the way we book presenters or, you know, just just not our not our not our mission to say, but just to know these set of values are what we're pulling from that we see being important to get to our community. Like just that list you had with health, uh, business, justice. Should we define those? But I mean, that's life. It's human. It's, 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 it's what I mean. Just what? What do we need? We have a lot of needs, but health, jobs, you know, uh, loans, housing, everything that that's happening in the world about life in Charlotte because Charlotte is booming. And we should be moving forward instead of moving back. Say, I, I'll say, just try not to define because, yes. in a way, that kind of bothers you. So, it's so many things that we, I feel, could be beneficial. Even something as far as gardening or um, clean yeah. food sources, or mm -hmm. just don't. I, I feel like if you define it, it will put you in a box. And just, you know, excuse me, but you know, we know that the city is town's operation and the county handles health and human services. All of that is part of that's that makes civilization occurs and, and, and operate in the town. So as long as we they're associated with living health and human services and operations, that's where the money. So we need to understand that we need to have people that are getting this, this, these millions of dollars for the Humane Society. You know, we need to know, I, you know, you, you're talking about sitting across from a kid. We've had all kinds of people in here, not people, kinds of people, but appeal to us about volunteering, you know, to, to do that, you know, to, to help a child. But we need to cover the whole spectrum of what's needed 
We're no different than Atlanta or California or any other state. It's just a shot is so fish, that's all. So we just need a good plan based on what's being shared here this morning. And we need to we need to work the plan. But we have to have it. Even that, like going back to what you just said about philanthropists. Once you're in that room, you gotta know what to do while you're in it. I, I went to the uh retirement party for Michael Marcitano last week. It, I, just made me itch. I didn't, you know, I'm, you know, again, I'm a black kid from the West Side, so knowing how to navigate that room and knowing what to do in that room, that's not my, my, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable for me, you know, quite honestly. So, where is that a meeting for, for the forum? Like, this is who this person is, or th these are the philanthropists, this is how you, you know, this is how you navigate that world? What do you do with that? Well, when you look at your most desired objective, whatever it is that we are trying to do at Tuesday morning breakfast, it has to come from you. It has to come from the ones of us that are committed to, to continue the Tuesday forum and to serve the people in our community and to bring the people to us and have the audience. It's left up to us. I will not, I can't stop with just saying we can just do it. We have to plan. If you do, if you have a plan and work the plan, it will work for you. So I'm, I would, I'm a strong advocate right now is that we need to get together and come up with a comprehensive plan on how we're going to get them here. It, it wouldn't take forever. I hope I'll be still living when we finish it, but it won't take forever to do that. And I and we have we have a place. This place. I think we need more. I think we need more participants coming to choose more than preference. We have young people, old people. You know, like we have a tendency we can get trapped when we think we're making decisions for the community. And we are not. You know, we're just individuals. We're just individuals. No, I'm just saying we're just individuals in the group. And like we need to get more community members if we can, you know, younger people, older people. Uh, whatever, because you know, I don't think it's you know, I don't think it's our duty to make decisions for no, everybody. We are a forum. We are not an organization. Oh, right. We do not anything that we do outside of our Tuesday morning meetings. We're acting individually. Yeah, we right. nobody can represent this right. forum. Right. In any other means than when you're at the forum. Let me do you this. You can't go to a meeting and say, I'm here for the Tuesday morning breakfast forum. You are not because you're not in this forum. So that's what people need to remember. We can't, and that's what a lot of people think that we don't do enough because we don't go out into the community as the Tuesday morning breakfast forum. But that's not what we're about. We are about a forum. We give people a place to be and talk. Hold on. Let's, let's, hold on. We're going to do this again because it's 9 58. We're going to give everybody. 20 to 30 seconds for a closing thought because we got to get out of this room. All right. Let's we'll start right here. If you have anything to say, you can go ahead. All right. We need a comprehensive plan with the ones of us that are committed to the one for I don't want to leave this room without thanking Chris for donating her time for the um, breakfast. Sandwiches that I wish we could have every Tuesday when they went down the track. And I'm going out thanking her because she donated all of her time. We only paid her for the materials themselves, and she donated all of her time. And I thank you, Chris. I'm good. I have an announcement. So, do we have announcements after this? This is your announcement. <laughs> okay. Um, on the 26th of this month, uh, the League of Women Voters is going to have an opportunity from 6 to 8, many, 6.30 to 8, but there will be food at 6 because people may be coming from work. Uh, at the Government Center, but also hybrid online for people to learn about whatever the new proposal is going to be, draft proposal from CMS about comprehensive plan. 
The comprehensive plan includes facilities for the next 10 years, which could lead to a bond issue in November. It also includes magnet um, plans and and general assembly. So it's very important for people to be involved. The league will be doing what we were talking about today. The league will be looking specifically from the point of view of equity. So we will let CNS present whatever the new draft is, then we will be asking specific questions about equity, and then we will open it up to the poll to people questions regarding equity, how this plan impacts equity, which means all students. So I would encourage folks to go come. I'd really like to spread the word. It's the 26th Thursday, the 26th January. Okay, and the board will be voting, be voting on this. They've been saying for I think it could be put off as late as March 28th, but this will impact us for the next 10 years. Really, that's why the league's doing it. Get the board back. So yeah. please stop. Um, real quick, I love her idea about getting schools involved. I don't know if you do it through communities and schools, going and speaking to the principals. It could be uh, it's very complicated, but uh, very convoluted, actually. But I think you talk to the principals, go through the student council, um, but getting students involved really is a big thing because you want to reach out to that next generation because that next generation is going to be the future leaders. So we have, you have to figure a way. I know it's a forum. It's a forum where everybody can come and speak and say what they want, but there are a group of leaders and elders that we do look to that run and control this forum. And I think you are the voices. I think you are the I think you have the ability. I think you have the respect to be able to go out there and speak on behalf of the forum to pull certain people in to get other organizations to be a part of it. But I think because of how Charlotte, the nuance of what Charlotte is, that's the key. You need to meet Sarah. It's doable, very doable. Okay. And teach child groups to save the world. Awesome. You want to add? Are you just media? Yeah, I would like to see what you can go along with the uh, individuals sitting around the table. That represent different aspects of the community. You know, so if, if we can do anything, I invite anybody to be appreciated because I don't think that you people sitting around the table make decisions. And I just wanted to take time to say thank you for your passion. Thank you for being here. Thank you for continuing to make the forum as great as it is. And I continue to look forward to seeing you all in the future. Hope to see you next week where our speaker will be Ms. Uh, Christy Puckett, uh, leader of the ACLU, activist, and has just one of the most incredible stories I've ever heard in my life. So I look forward to seeing you all next week.